Hello children, how are you all? I hope you are all fine at home, right? Yes, in this video we are going to see a poem, The School Boy from, from, from grade 8. From grade 8. Let us move into the poem. So, this is an introduction for the poem, The School Boy. It is written by William Blake. The school boy in the poem is not a happy child. Here in this poem, the author William Blake writes about a schoolboy who was not happy. What makes him unhappy? Let us find out by reading the poem. Why does he himself uh, compares to a bird that lives in a cage or a plant that withers when it should blossom? So he compares himself to a bird which lives in a cage or a plant that withers when it wither me falls down when it should blossom. The ancient of days, Newton, Nebuchadnezzar and some of his poems are The Tiger, London, Lamb. The Tiger, London, the Lamb. So can you see this picture children? He is William Blake. Let us see the Summary of the poem. The poem throws light on the mindset of a schoolboy. He is very unhappy. He loves outdoor life. He hears the birds singing. The blowing of horn by the huntsman pleases him. He wants to enjoy the company of the skylark. But he can find such a joy only on a summer morning. So the poem throws a light on the mindset of a schoolboy. It is about the mindset of a schoolboy. He is unhappy. Why he is unhappy? He loves to live the outdoor life. He hears the birds singing every day and he loves to uh, wake up in the summer morning. He was happy only in the summer morning. Instead of living like a free bird, the boy is made to go to school. Because why he is liking only summer morning? Because all the summer days will be holidays, right? Yes. So the boy is made to go to school. It makes him sad. I hope you are all very happy because you are not coming to school. Am I right? No. Are you all waiting to come to school, children? Yes. So he hates going to school because of his cruel old teacher. He had a cruel old teacher. So there are there the small children spend the day from morning to evening and get disappointed. So the children are spending the whole day in the school and getting disappointed. I hope you are all not going to get disappointed because we are all waiting eagerly to meet you children. Sometimes the boy sits for horse with his head hanging down but he is caged. He finds no joy in reading his book. The school is a cheerless place for him. He, fo he feels that the school is not cheerful enough. He gets fed up with shower of words from his teacher. So the teacher whenever she scolds, he gets fed up. The boy compares himself to a bird who is born free to fly and enjoy life but he is caged. So now he is comparing himself to a bird which is born to free and to fly and enjoy its life but he is caged he was in he feels that uh, school is a cage he cannot sing in the cage the boy has the feeling of being a prisoner at school he was considered to be a prisoner right who's a person who lives in the prison jail so he is all the time afraid of the teacher. As a caged bird, he lets his wings droop down and forgets to share the joy of spring. I hope you this year you are not undergoing such a situation. The poet calls upon the parents not to be so harsh or cruel uh, towards the children. School going kids are as delicate as birds and flowers. They are very much delicate they should be treated softly they need fresh air and free movement to grow healthy and happy to grow healthy and happy they should uh, have fresh air and free movement 
So keeping them under excess cage will make them unhappy. If a plant is denied air and is kept in dark, it won't grow well and never bear fruit. So making children to live a mission life is like growing a uh, plant where there is fully covered with darkness. Why uh, the author has given such an example? Because uh, without sunlight, plants will not grow. Can you see? Are you all happy to see this picture? Or you all like to come to school like this? Happily children? Yes. Stanza 1. Let us see the explanation stanza wise. So first stanza is, first I love to rise in summer morn. Morn means morning. When the bird sings on every tree, the distant huntsman winds his horn. And the skylark sings with me. Oh, what sweet company. The speaker in this poem is a young boy who is joyful and likes to awake in the fresh and delightful summer morning. Further, he describes the beauty of summer morning. The boy likes the chirping of the birds on every tree. The sound of the horn blown by the hunter from a distance. And sweet songs of Skylark. He feels very much happy with this company. So in stanza 2, but to go to school in summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. The author thinks that, sorry, the narrator, the school boy thinks that going to school in summer morning, it drives, it takes all his joy away. Under a cruel eye outworn, the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. So it is a matter of utmost disappointment for the uh, speaker, that is the small boy, to attend school in such a sweet summer morning where actually he wishes to enjoy the delight of summer. So in winter season, it, is, it would be very cold, right children? Yes. In rainy season also, you will not be able to enjoy the day uh, that much when you enjoy in the summer day. He is tired and even puzzled and under the strict supervision of his teacher, the phrase outworn refers to the eyes of the teacher that actually tires and tires the boy. So when one continuously make you sit and work in the same place, it actually tires, make them tired. So instead of enjoying the pleasures of summer, the child has to compulsory attend the school where he spends his day in boredom and sadness. So whenever he is bored, so the child has to attend the school compulsory. Whether he is bored or sad, whatever it might be, he has to go to school. In stanza 3, oh, Then at times I drooping sit and spend many as anxious hour, nor in my book can I take delight. Bum, uh, more nor sit in learning's bower, worn through the dreary shower. So here the child expresses his tiredness. He was very much tired of going to school. He sits unwillingly in the sea of boredom. So he compares his boredom is for is uh, like a sea for him. And the child keeps under control the attack on him by the harsh personality of the teacher and unnecessary lectures. So he never stands there. And his urge for unchecked freedom, the learning's bower refers to garden where the child can be thought in an interesting way. The child has to be thought in an interesting way so that it should not feel bored to come to school only if nature accompanies him instead of the school teacher instead of school teacher what uh, he wants to teach yes he wants to teach the interesting way and how nature accompanies him instead of the school teacher in stanza four how can a bird that born for joy sit in cage and sing? 
How can a child when fears annoy but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? So here the poet compares the child with a bird. According to his view, a bird which is born cheerful and fun-loving can never sing sweet songs. It cannot sing sweet songs if caged. So whatever sweet voice the bird may have, but when it is caged, it cannot sing. Similarly, a child, if remained under the umbrella of annoying fear and tension, so whenever your mind is kept very tense, so what work will be taken over there? Nothing will happen. So the distrust of his teacher can never enjoy the natural instincts of joy and playfulness. Indeed, a world of full rigid course of discipline will ruthlessly take away the beautiful springs. That is, what are the beautiful springs? The children, the childhood days of a person's life. When we don't enjoy our childhood, what is there to think about in our olden days? So even now, I would think how playfully we would uh, used to uh, play with the mud and make pots, small, small pots, small uh, uh, small uh, grinder grinders yes with mud whenever it starts raining we used to collect the mud and we play like that and you people will not you are not playing with mud so when you play with mud no our immunity uh, develops naturally yes children yes so i don't ask you to go and play with the mud now because we are all should be aware of the COVID-19. Yes? In this picture, can you see the boy going to school happily? Yes? So, write two or three points on your own based on this picture. So, next, shall we move to the stanza 5? Oh, father and mother, if buds are nipped, and blossoms blown away, and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, by sorrow and care's dismay. So parents, he is talking to his parents, complains to the highest authority. Who are the highest authorities? Father and mother. He is saying that if a child is picked up and swept in, of, in the early stage of life, is an ocean of sorrow he calls it as ocean of sorrow where there is no one to take care and if happiness crushes the sensitive plants beautiful and the newborn buds crushes can never be joyful next is stanza six how shall the summer arise in joy or the summer fruits appear or how shall we gather what griefs destroy? Or bless the mellowing year when the blast of winter appears? Okay. The explanation of stanza 6. So if care and concern rule over the plants, if there is too much of concern over the plants, birds, such a small uh, summer will be dry and will be bear no fruit. So the child inquires his parents as to how they can win back what pain or sadness has destroyed. If the plants perish dry up due to the pain or sorrow, no fruit will be there in, the, in that season of atom. So he restricted, one has to be very sure that the adult life will be absolutely dry. Literary devices used in this poem are metaphor and simile are used by the poet. So in the whole poem, the author compares himself with a, a bird, right? Yes. So can you see in this line, under the cruel eye outworn. So here the eyes of the teacher has been compared to a cruel eye. Rhyming words, mon, mon, horn and many words like this. Alliteration, the distant hunts many wins his horn. So it, what is alliteration? It should start with the same consonant sound. So for example, is his horn. Next, repetition, 
nor is a word repeated twice in the poem so we have come to the end of this video children i hope you have understood this poem well and thank you for listening read the poem well and write the script test send it before 8 pm and have a nice day children